chains, the means of bondage, sometimes a physical or circumstantial restraint, sometimes internal obstacles or fixations like fear, revenge, anger, or desire. Belle Leona here, and in the third installment of the Journey Through Berserk, I'm going to share my thoughts on the binding chain chapter in the Conviction arc. It's incredibly short, but since the birthing ceremony chapter is quite lengthy, I thought I'd proactively shave off the duration of my next video by giving this chapter its own video. With that said, I will be discussing content in chapters 118 to 100. 25. And this also covers the last half of volume 16 and the first half of volume 17. And deluxe edition number 6. So beware of spoilers if you haven't read this far. And like all of Berserk thus far, there is explicit content, so beware if you're interested in reading on and are rather sensitive to that. But in this video, I will not go into too much detail. With that said, like I mentioned before, this is a very brief chapter, so this video will be quite short as I don't have too much to discuss. But as is consistent with the previous chapter, Guts's inhumane ferocity is emphasized as he slaughters numerous soldiers in a very severely wounded state. However, we also have some interesting development as the demons reveal that he is on the path to becoming a monster himself. Like we see later, these demonic entities seem to operate as vehicles of conviction, exposing personal wickedness of the characters they speak to while simultaneously tempting them. And like in the former chapter, Guts acts as a challenger to a female character's beliefs. And there did seem to be a formula, at least I perceived it, in the very beginning. In the Lost Children chapter, he dissuaded Jill from the idea of seeking refuge since that world harbored no paradise. Then after she witnessed a traumatizing battle, she finds hope and Miura portrays the scenes with light and delicate line art, with tons of white space and light screen tones, which is a very strong contrast to the heavily black and detailed grotesque visuals we often see. Here, he shatters Farnese's religiosity by declaring that the gods who exist offer no benevolent miracles. Then after she witnesses a horrifying battle with the specters, she beholds something beautiful within similarly framed panels that are very light and delicate. However, in this case, that epiphany disintegrates and is overtaken by a scene of possession and sexual advancement that shall not be shown here. And despite Guts being a central part, it seems like Farnese's character, revelations, and development occupied a major part of the spotlight. Especially since the chapter is entitled Binding Chain Chapter and she is a commander in the Holy Iron Chain Knight Squadron, which, to be fair, is a very pessimistic and daunting name for a squadron of religious soldiers. At a glance, it seems the chain might be the feudal faith in a benevolent, helpful god that doesn't exist, but it may also be the irreconcilable desires and consequential dissonance that occurs within Farnese as she's not simply a zealous devotee, as she seems to harbor and nurture some sexual desires of a more deviant nature. The ascetic practice of self-flagellation, usually associated with extreme piety, is exposed to be a method of masochistic gratification. And her lust after guts and the moral turmoil it triggers resembles Frollo's lust for the object of his prejudiced disdain in the hunchback of Notre Dame. However, as a disclaimer, I am not comparing the two. I perceive Frollo to be a reprehensible hypocrite, and I do think that Parnice is very much better. If anything, she is overzealous, misguided, and harbors darkness like every character in Berserk or even reality in that manner. But on a side note, it's interesting to see how she is so very different than Costco was. The fact that even though she's in a position of power, her orders are questioned and she may be inept or somewhat cowardly at combat. It's definitely an interesting contrast. However, it's also interesting getting to know her better as well as the other holy knights. Azan, with his overly enthusiastic chivalry and optimistically errant judgment of character, 
and Serpico, who is quite crafty and seems to be more than meets the eye. After all, he can see Puck when Farnese can't. So this chapter definitely hints at some things which I expect will be explored further in the following chapter. And then as a final comment, I do want to note that I think that it's possible that Guts 2 might be a victim or enabler of the binding chain as he feeds his inner monster. Miura might be indicating that both Farnese and Guts are wrestling with their inner demons and outer demons in a place of bondage. But those are my thoughts. What are yours? I'd love to see them in the comments below. And if you are so inclined, feel free to like and subscribe as well. I'd love to build a little community here on this platform. But this was extremely short, I know, but I'm pretty confident that the next video will be a lot longer. So with that, I thank you sincerely for watching this video and I hope that you find meaning in your pursuit of manga, anime, and happiness in life. I hope to see you in my next video.